Hi, I'm Mark Byro. I'm a third year medical student here at Case Western. I'm here today to discuss with you the visual pathway. In the first portion of this video, we will discuss the visual pathway and the layout itself. And in the second video, we will discuss different lesions to the visual pathway and their various pathologies. The lens, the portion of our eye where light passes through and is deflected before hitting the retina. From the retina, information is passed back to the optic nerve before information is passed to the optic chiasm and optic tract, finally before the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. From the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, information is passed through the optic radiations and finally back here to the visual cortex. When we refer to the visual cortex, we will discuss the upper and lower bank of the calcarine fissure. So here we have the first portion of this pathway, the visual field, us perceiving our surroundings. You'll notice that here we have color codes for both peripheral, on the outsides red, yellow, turquoise, and purple. And then for the central, green, puke green, magenta, blue, and orange. We will follow these colors and watch their paths as we travel through the visual pathway today. Information from the superior peripheral visual field passes through the lens and to the inferior medial portion of the retina. This portion of the retina is known as the nasal hemiretina, specifically the inferior nasal hemiretina. Information from the inferior peripheral visual field travels through the lens to the superior portion of the nasal hemiretina. Starting over here, information from the superior medial portion of the visual field travels through the lens to the inferior lateral or inferior portion of the temporal hemiretina. And then one more time, information from the inferior central visual field travels through the lens to the superior lateral or super superior temporal hemiretina. So just to summarize, information that starts off from the peripheral visual field ends up on the medial or nasal portions of the retina. If it was superior, it lands on the inferior portion of the retina. If it was inferior, it lands on the superior portion of the retina. We watch light pass through the lens and to the retina. From here, information from the retina is passed to the optic nerve. We have both a left and a right optic nerve depicted here. At the retina, information stays in the same orientation so that information from the superior temporal hemiretina stays in that orientation and so that information from the superior nasal hemiretina stays in that orientation and so the information from the inferior temporal hemiretina stays in that same orientation, and so on. However, as we travel from the optic nerve to the optic chiasm, we have a crossover of the nasal fibers bilaterally. So what does this mean? If we look all the way back to the visual field, we will take notice the information from our peripheral visual fields crosses over at the optic chiasm. This will be important as we discuss in our pathology portion of this talk. So after the optic chiasm, information is passed into the optic tract. Now here's an important talking point. Information, once it travels into the optic tract on the left and right side, is laid out so that information in my left optic tract controls the right-handed portions of both of my visual fields. And so that in the right optic tract, 
carries information from the left side of my visual fields. The optic tract passes along information to the lateral geniculate nucleus in the same orientation since the optic chiasm, okay? The thalamus is a sensory relay station for the brain. So this is a key synapse right here. After the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, information is passed through the optic radiations. Again, bearing in mind that the left optic radiation, if we go all the way back to the visual fields, the left optic radiation is going to control information from the right side of our visual fields in both eyes. And our right optic radiations are going to control the visual fields from our left hand side in both eyes. This is an important point. We'll come back to it in the visual pathology portion. So the optic radiations are divided into superior and inferior portions. The superior portion travels through the parietal lobe. The inferior portion, also referred to as Meyer's loop, travels through the temporal lobe. Next, after the optic radiations, information is passed to the visual cortex finally. Information superior to the calcarine fissure that divides the visual cortex controls the inferior, inferior portions of vision. Keep that in mind. And then information at the lower bank of the calcarine fissure is actually from the superior visual fields if we trace it all the way back. This concludes our talk of the visual pathway.